Good evening, everyone. Welcome to FGME Cast. Back with round seven of the Ants Car Truck Series. We've taken things to Kansas today. Hopefully, Dorothy stays away. And uh, we've got uh, another big round here. I'm joined tonight once again by Carl Withy. Welcome tonight, Carl. Good evening, Stuart, and good evening, everybody. Uh, yes, Kansas tonight. It's going to be a very interesting one. Uh, Kansas, very, very fast track. That, uh, that tri-oval sort of layout. Uh, relatively sort of longish track uh, with 2.4 kilometers the sort of cookie cutter as you can say in design very high speeds here very easy to lose the car though it can be one of those tracks that can cost you dearly if you push it too hard very hard on the right side of this car as usual and we uh, we say it every single week tires uh, the critical factor the uh, draft here probably not going to be too much of an issue so it's uh, going to be all about managing your uh, tyres, and uh, that is uh, no different a week in, week out for the uh, Ants Car Truck Series here on FGM Acast. Well, that's it, but you do get quite a bit of the, the adva advantage when you are in the draft here. It's, it's a little bit like a smaller super speedway. Uh, we've seen in practice, for instance, uh, sort of some of the fast laps on their own are about a 31 1. Uh, while in the draft, it's about a 30 point, uh, 30 point, uh, 30 point 8. So you, you do gain about two tenths of a second when you're in that draft. It can be very, very good if you get there. The trouble is, of course, you do tend to heat up the tyres a little bit more and the car as well. So you've got to be a bit careful running in that position. And that's, of course, always the balance on the on these oval races, is working out what the best balance for the race is going to be for yourself. So uh, we just put the track map up there so people can get an idea of it uh, not quite fitting into the stream. So it's quite a, uh, a big one, but we'll uh, get that modified throughout the night so we can have that there for the race. But we uh, we only have about five minutes left to go here in practice before we jump into solo qualifying for round seven. But uh, a couple of uh, fresh runners for tonight as well. Just having a look through, uh, once again, a really... Strong field. We've got 34 cars here. Michael Cracknell, he has not run with us yet this season. Uh, Brody Masters uh, certainly has. Looking forward to seeing what he can do uh, tonight as well. Jamie Nankervis joins us for the first time tonight uh, in this field, along with Carl Hoffman's as well. So we've got a few new runners here tonight. The usual suspects as well. Luke Traher back this week, uh, having missed a week last week. The only multiple race winner so far this season. Uh, so interesting to see how he responds uh, after last week's run. And uh, there'll be a number of drivers as well looking to try and get some clean runs this week with a uh, very action-packed run for them, uh, a lot of them last week. Yeah, that's it. It, it shaked up things a bit last week in the old standings. Uh, just quickly, we'll run through those positions for you as we're waiting for qualifying to start. So up the front of the field is Stephen Williams, still uh, up there with uh, 192 points at the moment. A little bit further behind is Christopher Finley with 137. And then just behind him, Riley Curtis, 136. 135 for Chris Purnell. Very, very tight there in the top five with Ruben Phelps in fifth position with 134. Then we jump back to Hamish Gallagher in sixth with 124 points, 122 points for Matthew Raymond. Gary Wellman is there in eighth place with 113. Then we have joint ninth at the moment between Brody Masters and Luke Traher with 111 points. So it's still all to play for, but at the moment, Stephen Williams looking good up there at the front. Yeah, and certainly uh, the driver who will be looking to get a, a clean run tonight to uh, further his progress is Ruben Phelps, uh, heavily affected at uh, the last round when the drivers, if you weren't here last week, uh, took on Richmond and uh, there were a number of caution periods that uh, involved particularly one, a uh, large portion of the field and uh, it was uh, a, a good night, um, however, for Hamish Gallagher who took out that race with Michael Skurlock second and Justin Howe in third position. So... Um, plenty uh, to talk about from that one, but Kansas is going to be an exciting run for us tonight. Yeah, that's it. It really did shake things up. And that that's the thing in oval racing. You can have some really, really bad results, but then the good ones come. Um, it is a tricky series to race, and it is a tricky championship to win as well. Consistency is often the key to victory, but you also need to get those good results in. Um, Hamish Gallagher is going to try and uh, obviously get in a little bit later this season he did miss a couple of races but he's definitely one to watch out for in the mitch motorsport team very very fast driver there one of our regulars in the cup season 
nice to see Ryan Jones out there as well, driver that isn't always able to make it with us. But again, one of those drivers that can be very, very quick out on the circuit. Um, so expect to see some interesting racing from him as well. And Stephen Williams, of course, uh, going to be trying to keep a hold of that uh, that championship lead. And he's been doing a great job so far, uh, finishing in good positions and within the top sort of the top ten the majority of the time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've spoken about uh, on a number of uh, the streams so far this season. Um, how many drivers who managed to uh, manage their car, shall we say, staying clean, damage free? through to sort of that 75% race distance. Um, I haven't actually gone in and done it, but I imagine a majority of the time the race winner just comes from that zone uh, at that sort of 75% race distance mark um, with a clean car, fresh set of tyres. A little bit of pit strategy luck has gone uh, some of the drivers' way, but there's also been plenty who've managed a, a set of tyres well and truly uh, beyond their best days and managed to, uh, to get up, which was um, a little bit of what we saw last week. So... Um, variety is certainly the spice of life, but uh, car management, um, a, uh, a real impact uh, in the results here. Yeah, that's it. It's all about managing that vehicle, getting it to a point in the race where you know you can use it. And that's one of the big things for oval racing is you've almost got to nurse it around that first half of the race. And then the second half of the race is where you attack. If you attack too early, you can often get yourself caught up in a silly wreck, get your car damaged and that's it especially on a track like this any damage to the front of these cars is really going to affect you just with the speed these vehicles are going around tonight just to give you another update on something that we do pay particular attention to of course is race winners so far we have had williams pernell gallagher and k donnelly all take out a single race win and Luke Traher, so far the only multiple race winner. Michael Skurlock featuring uh, reasonably consistently in our top three positions. So they're the drivers to have a look out for. We'll see if we can get another multiple race winner tonight. Or will it be Luke Traher first to three race wins? Obviously, time will tell. As uh, the uh, the lights switch off here. And we go to darkness. Or night time, I should say. It's not total darkness. Of course, the track is very well lit. But we are heading into qualifying. And uh, we're looking for purple sectors. Not sure if anyone's picked up on it yet or not. They probably haven't, but we do try and pick up the driver first out of the pit. So um, I believe tonight we are actually going to be sticking with Todd Maxfield for our first lap around. So we will jump on board with him and uh, follow him to take us for the first lap around Kansas. Yeah, Canvas is one of those. It's one of those tricky tracks. As I say, it's very much one of those cookie cutter tracks, which everybody thinks they're all identical. Um, they very much are not. You'll see here as he goes through turns uh, one and two, sorry, as he's coming across the trioval section. Um, the trioval is a big thing. You drop below that white line. You've got to get back on that uh, that that curved to that sort of banked section into turns one and two and you'll see the driver's just doing a slight lift here sometimes uh, if the tires aren't up to temperature you might not be able to run through at full speed it's quite a wide circuit though so sometimes you can get away with it you've also got to limit the rear slip as you come into this section turn three and four you just see the back end stepping out there for maxfield he's managed to catch it but that's going to lose him a lot of time he's going to go around again as he heats up those tires absolutely so he's uh, ducked down onto the infield there so let's jump across carl hoffman's just completed his first flying lap, 30.87. Uh, currently the mark at the top there, Kay Donnelly with an 8.9. Uh, Tom Huggin at 9.5. And as we do see here, a number of our front runners uh, just waiting in pit lane to jump out. Even though solo qualifying here, just getting an idea on what the times are doing. The times are going to plummet from what we saw in practice um, it, because it was run in daytime. We were running at a temperature of about 36, 37 degrees Celsius for that practice session. Uh, temperature has dropped now to 19 degrees. So that is really going to help these guys out for tire life. Uh, they're also going to be able to push a little bit harder. Yeah, of course. So um, just bringing that weather information up on track up on screen for you now as well as uh, Michael Skurlock just finishes his second lap there 30.76 so managing to go quicker um, but just being pipped at the post by Ben Vickers so far 30.75 Josh Micklemore has just jumped up with a 30.79 in the Mitch Motorsport entry 
Yeah, absolutely brilliant lap there from Ben Vickers. That was his first lap as well. He only did the one lap, and he made it count there. Absolutely. So, cracking job, Raymond Jaeger there. Back uh, this week. I'm pretty sure he was absent last week. So, back in the seat. We've got Riley Curtis as well in uh, the Mark 1 entry. We uh, had a strong performance last week. Then just got affected at the end of the race there. Um, himself and uh, Aiden Schultz. So they'll be looking to uh, make some improvements this week. Yeah, they, they're going to want to try and get a better result than they had last time. Obviously, that little bit of impact between them both really cost them uh, before as we switch to Stephen Williams there. Uh, Stephen Williams, of course, coming in championship leader at the moment and looking very strong so far. We'll see how he goes for this qualifying lap because he's going to want to try and start towards the front of this pack now, try and get a good starting position. Uh, and avoid the sort of mid-pack shuffle that can happen on a track like this. With the temperatures dropping, it's going to help these drivers out a lot because those tyres are not going to sort of die as quickly, but you still have to be careful here. You still have to watch out for cars pushing a bit too fast, a bit too early, and losing control at the starts. Yeah, so yeah, a problem faces all forms of motorsport. So, as you say, they'll be trying to make sure that they don't get involved in that where they can avoid it. Steve Williams there, a 31.02 on his first lap. I'd say he's lined himself up for this second lap. This is going to be the fast one. He looks like he was just taking a slightly tighter curve uh, through that first lap, and he's just eased it off a little bit through this one. So, possibly just trying to build up a little bit of extra tyre temperature as the track has dropped in to, in uh, in heat. So he's going to try for the fast one this time round. How does he go with this lap? Up eight. into 12th position. 30.84. So uh, he was the last of our qualifiers so far. Matty Raymond, Michael Shaw, Kai Turner, Michael Cracknell not yet jumping out onto track, and Todd Maxfield, unfortunately, not managing to set a time in his two laps. So... We've got uh, about five seconds to go here before qualifying will conclude, and we will jump across and bring you the grid for this round, round seven of our series here. And we bring that one up on the screen there, and I've uh, just forgotten to update that overlay there. We'll get that done for next week, but we will run through this list. It is Ben Vickers and Michael Skurlock yet again off the front row of the grid. We've got Riley Curtis, Josh Micklemore off row two, Scott Griffiths, Kay Donnelly off row three with Ryan Jones and Carl Hoffman off row four, Raymond Yeager and Tony Gagliardi off row five with Troy Davison and Stephen Williams off row six. Williams will be looking to manage his race from there and potentially obviously try and improve that as we get into things. We'll flick the page over here and have a look at what else we've got. It's Tom Huggan for Mark 1 Esports. We've got Christopher Finlay next to him. Gary Wellman, Norm Clark off the next row. We've got Hamish Gallagher and Mirko Datanik off row 9. It's Gavin Fitzpatrick and Dwayne Priest off row 10. Aiden Schultz, Aaron Dillon off row 11, followed by Luke Traher and Tristan Koch off row 12. Whoa. On to the next one is Cam James and Justin Howe off row 13. We've got Jamie Nankervis and Aaron Major off row 14. Brody Masters and Matty Raymond off row 15. Todd Maxfield, Michael Shaw 16. And we've got Michael Cracknell and Kai Turner off row 17. And that is all she brought tonight for us here at Kansas Raceway. Cars yeah, these guys are going to be looking at probably splitting the race into three parts tonight just because of the tyre wear. Fuel wide, fuel's not going to be a problem tonight for them, uh, but expect to see them come in if there is a caution within about 10 laps uh, as they do have a, uh, unlimited tyres tonight, so no tyre limits out there. Uh, it's going to be who notices that is going to be a big winner, of course, as a few drivers may not check the tyre limits sometimes, um, but they are going to sort of Want to try and split the race into thirds tonight just to keep the pace up, I would say. It's one of the things that amuses me uh, from last week of who notices how many sets of tyres they've got. So, uh, as they uh, say, it's all in the preparation and the detail to so make sure that you're aware of it. And uh, in terms of preparation and detail, just a quick mention for our streaming partner, AJ Insurance Services, um, attending to the uh, finer details of your insurance coverage if you need it, if you're self employed or running a business and you're looking for insurance for some insurance advice or just insurance advice in general, 
AJ Insurance Services, our streaming partner. Definitely where we'd expect you to go, and uh, we'd love it if you could uh, support the people that support our stream, um, and that certainly firmly places them in your eyesight. As uh, we're just seeing here, the drivers warming up, getting ready to run. It's a view out of the front of Ben Vickers, our pole sitter's car at the moment as the pace truck has peeled off and we're waiting for the green light to fall before we get this one underway. It's going to be 100 laps and we are off and running here at Kansas. The green flag waves and it's been a really good start here. Ben Vickers, he's got a little bit of a jump there. Skurlock just uh, sleeping a little bit on the throttle, you might say. Riley Curtis right behind him. We've got Josh Micklemore, Scott Griffiths, Kay Donnelly, Ryan Jones, Cal Hoffman, Raymond Yeager and Tony Gagliardi rounding out the top 10 as we get underway here at Kansas. And look at the jump between Scott Griffith and Josh Micklemore at the moment. There is a huge gap between both of those packs now. Uh, they're going to want to try and work together. Just Oh, as uh, just behind K, uh, sorry, not K, Lord, uh, uh Ryan Jones had a big, big moment there. And towards the back, we've got a car off. Uh, just trying to find out who that was. It's Aaron Dillon. Yeah. Aaron Dillon had a big moment there into turn number three. He's lost it. Uh, lost him going in there and a big big incident there for Aaron Dillon. Interesting because the uh, yellow flag was triggered um, a little bit earlier on than that. I'm just going to try and roll it back and we'll see what we can find. So there it is there. Yeah, Dillon down into Traher and Traher has gone sailing off down onto the infield. Looked like Aiden Schultz as well might have been involved in that one. In fact it was Schultz who got hit. Sim boys down into Crank Esports, and unfortunately, uh, then the Mark 1 Motorsport guys getting involved as well. Just seeing if Schultz managed to control it here. He's run back onto the track. Yeah, he's managed to get it back going again. It was a little bit slow there for Aiden Schultz just to get it back onto the track. I think he was just trying to work out what actually happened there. It was a big surprise. Um, Aaron Dillon just lost it going into turn number four there. The back end stepped out. He tried to correct it unfortunately went up into the wall and then pinged off of it. The actual caution was started from uh, Ryan, Ryan Jones there. Uh, he lost the car going off over the, uh, just into the trioval section. And that's what brought the caution out. But uh, immediately as that was happening, uh, Aaron Dillon lost the car as well. So you sort of had two incidents at the same time. No, it's not going to make his race easier tonight. Uh, the right is very much the place where you don't want damage tonight because the tyres do take a big pounding around this circuit. Even the right front takes a lot of uh, a lot of uh, punishment here. So that damage is not going to help his race for the evening. The aero damage as well is never a fun thing. So imagine that we're going to see him in the pits for a little bit of time just to try and get as much of that damage repaired as possible before coming back out. That that's going to hurt him for the championship positions. Uh, he's going to obviously try and uh, climb his way back. It's not all over, of course. We have seen that uh, persistence does pay off sometimes, and you can make uh, you can make things come better for you as long as you don't give up in a race. Uh, but it is never an easy thing to do. Yeah, he's going to want to try and repeat that. Of course, it does get a little bit harder every time you restart. The guy behind you knows what your knows your previous start, of course. So you have to play those games of uh, taking a little bit of a different start to it. Uh, of course, in the, the Ants Car series, the 
green light the green comes out and you can't pass until the start finish line so you've got to stay in that formation and it is up to the leader when to go it's not just when the green drops it's when the leader drops his foot to the foot foot to the floor that's when when it all starts up so ben vickers is in the best spot possible but skirlock is a wise head on those shoulders and he will the listening to that car ahead of him and waiting in anticipation to drop his foot as we will go back to green here at Kansas Speedway. Skirlock running that higher line at the moment. He's going to try for that slightly high line approach. And you can see there behind him, Micklemore doing the same thing. Uh, of course, if you run that high line, you tend to be a little bit better on the exit of the corner, but you do lose a little bit of speed going around there. Um, but it is much better for the tyres. Uh, the tyres will get a much better life out of them, but you do have to watch out for that wall that is easy to hit. Skirlock just tapping the wall there, um, just as uh, just as Micklemore came underneath Skirlock there, it looks like the back end just lifted a little bit on him, uh, which can happen in these cars. You do get a little bit of aero wash sometimes, and Skirlock just nibbled the wall a little bit. That gave Micklemore the opportunity to get up in front there, and he's going to take advantage of that with Skirlock behind him now. And he certainly has, so he's jumped up in front there, and Skirlock's going to be all over him, trying to go with him. So you'll see those guys at the top starting to push a little bit. Riley Curtis there as well in the bottom line. You can see Kay Donnelly there uh, with Carl Hoffman as well as Raymond Yeager just on the top line. Uh, so those guys are starting to get a little bit racy. You can see that top line starting to form up a little bit, I think, as Ben Vickers does start sliding up there a little bit. He's a little bit unsure at the moment. He doesn't want to run that high line, it seems. Uh, but he might want to a little bit later in this race just to keep his tyres alive. That's the main thing. Uh, but at the moment, Josh Micklemore has taken the lead of the race and he's starting to pull away. So he's got some good speed up in that car already. And uh, Mitch Motorsport. We, Go we've got cars almost going three wide towards the back there with uh, 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 Tony Gigliani and Scott Griffiths as well as Carl Hoffman there. So a few cars starting to take a little bit of a risk this early on in the race, sort of looking at that three wide. I uh, just see in the background there Hamish Gallagher as well. He's starting to press on. He wants to get up there with his teammate and start pressing the advantage for this race. Yeah, absolutely. And that distinctive livery that Hamish uh, runs on the truck uh, with Taylor Swift on the side of it. We love that one. It's a, uh, it stands out. So, But, uh, yeah, it's sort of running three wide. It's real close here down in and around Tony uh, Gagliardi. Try and quickly jump on board with him so you can have a look. You can see there, it's just being pushed on the Simboys cars, the Triple One Hamy of Ryan Jones. It's just in there behind him. In fact, uh, my apologies there, Sim Speed Network car. And he is well and truly pressing. Yeah, they've given Kai Donnelly a nice push to the front. He's up there in, uh, just up side by side at the moment with Ben Vickers uh, battling for third place as Michael Scurlock does start to pull away a little bit with Josh Micklemore up ahead. So the leaders are starting to pull away a little bit as these guys battle on. Uh, they will be loving this fight behind them because that means they can get some clean air running and start to run away from this group. The more they battle, the better it's going to be for that lead too. It's had a really, really solid pack forming here, but um, the gap forming, so it's going to be who is going to work together. How are they going to get back up onto the lead two? So the gap's starting to close a little bit to Skirlock. It's a huge pack forming, in fact. Probably one of the biggest we've seen. The gap there closing right down. But we've basically got from 
third position all the way back down to 14th in this pack chasing the leaders and they have jumped back up Kay Donnelly onto the back of Michael Skurlock yeah it is all action in that pack at the moment and it is very very chop and change there uh, if you get caught out in the wrong position at the wrong moment you will all of a sudden drop back a lot of positions as they are running so close to each other as uh, as we hit lap 15 you just see that trying to work the line here Donnelly Simboy's car just ducking down onto the lower line Don't speak too much out of turn but I generally find Michael Skurlock does run a slightly different line to most of the drivers in the field it does work for him obviously a uh, very quick and consistent driver a driver with a lot of experience under his uh, on, under his shoes, you can say Michael Scullop, but he does like to run a slightly higher line, it seems, than other drivers, and that does come with a risk sometimes, as we saw with that little bite of the wall, no damage to the car, uh, just a slight bit of damage to that uh, crank esports paintwork, so no doubt uh, Chris will be shaking his fist as he needs to buy some more paint for that car. <laughs> yes, absolutely he will be. Uh, unfortunately missing from the race tonight, and uh, this team doing a good job representing. As there is a great battle for fourth, fifth, sixth place at the moment. They've got Kyle Donnelly, Carl Hoffman just breaking away at the moment. Uh, Riley Curtis and Ryan Joseph. Well, oh, there it is. Yeah. He's got Crash. just seen it there. Unfortunately, Kate Donnelly, the innocent victim in that one. Just didn't quite catch who it was, Carl. Maybe you can help me out there with the yellow livery. Riley Curtis, he just caught the eight from one going into turn one and that launched him up the track into K Donnelly there and spun him around. Ryan Jones just making it through that. He got very lucky not to be caught up in that one. Uh, Tony Gigliardi going absolutely wiped out in that, unfortunately. A lot of damage to the front of that car. Uh, probably going to be some calling and engine damage as he can take a big hit there. Uh, as well as Hamish Gallagher, I think. Hamish Gallagher just taking a bit of a swipe did he no he didn't he managed to avoid that wreck somehow so just got it up on screen now from riley curtis's perspective donnelly there doing his absolute uh, best to uh go right while turning left or go left while turning right but uh, as you say there the uh Gagliardi car coming through and just getting clipped sent him up into the wall and um hamish gallagher doing a good job to avoid all of that same with the 23 of troy davison um but uh the uh, damage there already done so interesting one we did have some solid racing there for a while and as we're expecting to now see a huge line of cars heading down into pit lane yeah, a massive gaggle of cars coming into pit lane. Carl Hoffman staying out at the moment, but he might come in the next lap. I would say he's just going to get a, uh, a, lead, a lap lead point here, but we're going to have to focus on the leaders as they come into pit lane, see how their stops go. I imagine most of them are going to take all four tyres at least. Uh, you might see a couple of people rolling the dice, just taking the rights, uh, just to try and get that track position, as the lefts don't wear as much, but I'd say most of them will take all four. We'll keep an eye on that for you. Dave Douglas has just dropped into the chat and said, oh, oh marshmallows for Riley. That's, uh, yes, absolutely <laughs> the case. Um, as uh, we're on board, Josh McElmore jumping back out. Michael Skurlock taking tyres as well. He's out of pit lane. So we'll look through yeah, they make the shuffle. Good, good stops there. Um, a few good stops there. Josh McElmore is going to keep the effective lead on that one. Um, as I say, Hoffman, he stayed out there. So the question is, is does he stay out now and uh, sort of see how he goes? But I imagine he will come in. Um, being on those tyres, they're going to be a little bit slower now. And uh, he could risk it. He could try and stay out there just in case there's another caution. Um, but it's going to be a tricky, tricky restart for him. He's got to be careful not to lose the rear on that restart. Yeah, and as we did see, even in the warm, obviously in the warmer weather, it's um, it's more difficult. We did see even in practice, uh, sorry, in qualifying, um, just how easy it is for the back to break away on fresh tyres. So you will have to be careful on the older, colder product. 
Yeah, and that, that's always the trouble when you've got mixed strategies in the field. You've got to be really careful not to spin those tyres up on that restart. It's so easy to do. Uh, even the pros will do it sometimes. We've seen so many uh, drivers, championship drivers, things like that, have it happen to them in the lead of a race put their foot down a little bit too hard, all of a sudden those tyres spin up and they go round at the front of the field and it is such a dangerous thing to happen as well because there are so many cars that can collect you. Okay, Donnelly is back out on track. So just, uh, he's going very slow there, so he's got to drop back into position. So we'll, uh, Hoffman here, it's going to be an interesting strategy. We'll see how this plays out. The lights are out. Oh, no, they're not. My apologies. <laughs> I just jumped, jumped ahead a little bit there. Thought they had to go on out, but uh, not quite yet. Getting a little bit eager there for the truck's lights to go out, but uh, shouldn't be too long now. Um, next lap round, and we'll be going back to green flag racing here. Hoffman will uh, Hoffman's will lead the race from there. Uh, so a uh, driver that we don't see too often in the trucks. He's been around for quite a while, Carl Hoffman's. Uh, so he's got experience under the belt. Um, one of those drivers has had some good results in the past and you know has appeared up in the top 10 a fair few times in the ans car series so not a not a new driver to the grid but a driver that we don't always see out there so we'll see how he goes on this restart but it's going to be tricky probably for skirlock behind him uh that top line will have a little bit of an easier time getting away but the main thing is going to be our first corner when they come into that first corner you'll see hoffman start to struggle as they turn as he turns into the corner and then the guys coming behind him will have the absolute pace on him a little bit of damage on the front of Ryan Jones's car as well there, just as we're looking in the pack. But uh, a lot of these lead cars are looking very, very straight indeed. We spoke about the importance of that at the top of the broadcast. So they'll be wanting to keep it that way as we uh, get back underway in just a few minutes. Well, not even minutes, just a few moments, I should say. Yeah, the, these laps aren't that long, Stuart. <laughs> no, no. Fortunately, not 100 laps at uh, a few minutes a lap will uh, be a little bit longer than anticipated. It's just waiting for Carl Hoffman's to get things underway here. Everyone formed back up. The pack has got their job done, and we're back underway here. Hoffman's gets the jump. We're looking for Micklemore to jump in behind him. It's Skurlock, Jones, Gallagher, Vickers, Doutonak, and we've got Davison, Wellman, and Williams rounding out the top ten here as M Josh Micklemore looks already... To make a move, Skirlock wants to go with him. So does Hamish Gallagher as they jump up into that top line. And it looks like Carl Hoffman's here is going to surrender a couple of positions. Yeah, this is going to be the struggle. Oh, Ben Vickers has a big, big wiggle behind them. He's managed to keep it going. But uh, this is going to be the time when he starts just bleeding pace as they go across the line. And that's when you go, oh, I really wish I'd changed those tyres. Uh, you just see how much faster those cars. Oh, as... Ben Vickers up into the wall. Big, big incident behind. Uh, Vickers into the wall. Managed to keep it going. I don't think we're going to see a caution, uh, but a lot of damage to the front of the pole sitter's car there. There's so still uh, a little bit of bump and shove going on in front of him there as well as people try to joust for the bitumen just to uh, make their way around the slow traffic. But as you're saying, no caution period. But our pole sitter now a lot further back down in the field than he would have anticipated. Yeah, that's going to hurt him for the rest of the race now. And, uh, yeah, that damage is not going to be good. Uh, just looking through the field as well, Luke Traher is working his way back up. He's in 15th at the moment. So good recovery so far from Luke Traher. He's got Riley Curtis just behind him in 16th. And those guys are battling pretty hard at the moment. Raymond Jagger there as well. Just looking to uh, move through underneath Traher and... Uh, go with Riley Curtis as well so but uh, as you say up uh, a number of spots actually six spots up on qualifying but uh, involved in that early incident so I just managed to jump back and have a quick look at that incident uh, with the pole sitter there uh, looked like Twain Priest just went up into him a little bit just lost a little bit of that front end grip and went into Ben Vickers there so Ben Vickers unfortunately wrong place wrong time there I uh, just heard on the radio as well Dwayne Priest just apologising for that one so They've, uh, they've made their uh, made their uh, mends on the radio, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, we still there in the mid pack. I'm just noticing there, Gallop. Gallop's just getting very loose there. Sorry to jump over you. No, no sure. problem. No Gallop problem. just got really loose there, coming through turn number two as the caution flag is out. 
just going to uh, say we'll jump back to this course and incident that involves Tristan Koch but uh, Gallagher there with a huge amount of speed on uh, Skirlock in front of him as well so uh, he was well and truly on his way through then just uh, as that caution period uh, arrived let's uh, see what the cause of this was I'll jump on board here Tristan Cocky's car looking extraordinarily second hand and he's just got real high up there. Oh, the Mark 1 guy's very, very lucky indeed not to be caught up in that. The 52 of Aiden Schultz. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll go back and have another look at that again. I'll just show you how just cl how close uh, that was for Aiden Schultz there. You can see he's just managed to scrape his way through there. Tiny little bit of damage down the side of the car. Um, but it was very, very close to being night over for uh, Aiden Schultz. Uh, last a little bit of luck for Schultz there. He's had some bad luck over those ones. Um, just looking at that instant, Norman Clark was getting squeezed a little bit low on the track there as uh, as uh, Koch just came down towards him and couldn't really do much where he was sitting, Norman Clark, and uh, Koch just went into the front of uh, Norman Clark there and around she went. So we're seeing here, and again, a list of cars jumping in. Carl Hoffman's, of course, as you'd expect, jumping into pit lane this time around. He's going to take a new set of tyres on that machine. Yeah, he's going to need them now. Uh, if everybody else stays out, of course, he's going to have those slightly fresh tyres, which are always nice to have. Um, I was just, just having a bit of a look through there as well. It looked like Schultz, he didn't evade uh, completely that one. Uh, he did get a bit of damage to the uh, left side of that car. So he's going to be in for some repairs as well. So uh, Angel's getting caught up a little bit in that one. Hopefully it won't be too long to repair that one. Absolutely. So just uh, waiting for the overlay to catch up here. It's decided that it wants to have a little bit of a break. Uh, as technology so often does, it's uh, it's getting towards the weekend. Well, it's just finished the weekend, so it's probably still a bit hungover. Just uh, not quite getting there, so we'll just wait for it to catch itself back up here. A bit of the Monday blues for the for the uh, overlay there. Absolutely, but uh, so we'll see here. Not the entire field heading into pit lane. Um, in fact, even uh, a couple of the drivers that have sustained damage not uh, getting themselves through the lane either to get uh, any of that additional damage fixed where they can. So. Uh yeah, I think a few of those drivers uh, that had some okay. earlier incidents are staying out there a little bit longer now because uh, they've probably fixed as much as they possibly can. Um, so we'll see how that one plays out for them because there's probably not much more that they can do to repair those uh, those cars, unfortunately. Yeah, and um, Trev uh, jumped into the stream here just uh, saying how quick Hamish has made his way up uh, from his qualifying position. So up 14 positions currently sitting in third of course our race winner from last week so uh, he certainly had pace on Skurlock there as I said before we uh, grabbed onto the replay of the incident that caused the caution he he was flying um, Skurlock definitely slower and um, he was uh, on his way I think to uh, certainly challenge Josh at the front of the field yeah, Hamish Gallagher is one of those drivers that has just been improving hand over fist the last few years. Uh, we've seen it in the Cup Series, of course, and, of course, the, the, every other series he's been in, in Anscar. He's just got such speed. When when he's on pace, there is not many people that can catch him. Uh, he's also very good at keeping those tyres alive as well, so definitely one to watch in this race. But he has a very experienced teammate in front of him in Josh Micklemore, who is a multiple race winner. Michael Skirlock ahead of him, another multiple race winner. So two very hard racing guys around him. Ryan Jones is just sitting behind him as well. A bit of damage on that car, but he is another driver that has a lot of pace underneath him and will definitely put some pressure on Gallagher as this race goes on. Indeed. We're just waiting to uh, get back underway here, obviously. Everyone who is going to pit has done what they needed to do. We like, uh, allowed Kay Donnelly a little bit of extra time to get some repairs done to his car after the incident he was involved in earlier on. Luke Traher staying out on track. He's now made his way back up to 12th after the incident for him. Steve Williams, championship leader, currently sitting in 10th. Um, good news for Steve is his car equally in good nick. So he's well positioned at the moment in 10th to uh, manage his race for the next little while. 
Yeah, the next stint as it is, we're on lap 30, so we've got 70 remaining of this race, so still a long way to go here tonight. Still a couple of pit stops in this race, but Josh Micklemore's going to lead us away here as the pace car will come up sliding into pit lane very shortly. And he's going to probably work together with Hamish Gallagher, and you're going to see a good restart on that bottom line. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, you've picked it. They've gone, and... Uh... They've just rolled straight up into first and second, Micklemore and Gallagher. Michael Skurlock pulls in behind them with Hamish Jones in behind him. It is Mercado, Titanic, Troy Davison, Gary Wellman, Scott Griffiths, Dwayne Priest, and Stephen Williams as your top ten as we get underway for restart three. Yeah, just outside the top ten, we've got Todd Maxfield there, made 20 positions up so far this race. So the, uh, the big gainer so far, Todd Maxfield there starting... Uh, way down in uh, do, 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 in 31st place so having a good run so far tonight and he's going to want to have this race remaining green for a bit longer but up front Josh Mickelmore has started to lead away now he's going to try and pull away a little bit uh, work with Hamish Gallagher to start pulling away from the group and see if they can make a little bit of a gap from Michael Skurlock well, Skurlock there just start addressing that gap a little bit it was a good restart, as you said, from Micklemore and Gallagher. Ryan Jones right behind him. So they'll all be wanting to make sure they maintain touching distance to this leading pair that will work together to try and break that. Open up the gap. So caught high up there, Skurlop. So we'll let, let Ryan Jones through into third position. And he's got Mirko Dortnick there behind him at the moment. Skurlock, those two are former teammates from long ago, so they, they know each other reasonably well. Um, so I imagine those two will try and work a little bit together to try and keep the gap honest between themselves, uh, Micklemore and Gallagher, uh, not fighting each other too hard, because uh, once you start fighting hard on a track like this, you do lose a bit of time. You see Ryan Jones is just catching up to Hamish Gallagher now. Uh, despite that little bit of damage to the front of Jones's car, he's still got some pace there, and he is putting the pressure on Hamish Gallagher running that high line at the moment. Having a really good view here. Across the right-hand rear wheel of Gallagher's vehicle. Just it's uh, how Ryan Jones is positioning the car. Just the movement as well between himself and Michael Skurlock across the track, how they take the line and how they try and extract some pace out of this one yeah you'll see ryan jones dipping in behind gallagher as they get onto the straights here just trying to get that little bit of draft to work for him uh, try and pick up a little bit of speed down the straights and then possibly step out a little bit in the corners to try and force gallagher to defend or move out of position a little bit just to just to try and put some pressure on him as well but gallagher's got a good run on his teammate at the moment getting a good little Bit of, uh, bit of draft action getting sucked up behind my, uh, Josh Micklemore there. Uh, but Ryan Jones is absolutely sticking to them. He's getting the advantage of being the third car in that little train, so he's going to get a nice little run here. I imagine we'll see him try and go down the inside in a couple of laps' time, just try and get a good run, try and go down the inside if he can, put the pressure on Gallagher, and uh, see if he can make Gallagher blink a little bit. Yeah, I think you're going to definitely see that. I think you've called that right. Just try and catch it here. When he does make the move, he's gone high side instead at the moment. He's still trying to get that car working for him, and he's just, he, he's sort of going all over the place, just trying to uh, make himself as menacing in the mirror as he can towards uh, Hamish there, and he's really putting the pressure on, and that's one of the big things you have to do sometimes, is just really apply the... Uh, the pressure to the driver in front of you the more you move behind them the more you're in their mirrors and the closer you get the more it can distract you but now he's trying to try down that inside he's going down the inside into turn one now he's going to try and make that move stick looks like he's managed to get behind josh mickmore so he's going to get a little bit of a draft here so he should be able to just get in front of gallagher if he can make it stick here it will work very well but gallagher's going to try his best to defend they are side by side as they come through three and four right now Gallagher's going to be held up high. He's going to lose a little bit of speed on the exit here. And you'll probably see him slot in behind Ryan Jones. Oh, as he's just darting around a little bit there. Just not quite able to close him out. We've got a slower car there in the high line as well. Just adding it to the mix. Michael Skurlock's closed right up behind him as well as Mirko Titanic. So it is on and lively at the front of this one. 
and Gallagher is now doing the exact same move to Ryan Jones, forcing him out wide, going down that inside line, and he's going to take that position with relative ease. Makes that one look easy there. You can see the difference between a pile with no damage and a pile with a little bit of damage there. It's all over the back of him again, so stick with this one. Just get a notification that Justin Howe has gone off track in the background. That hasn't caused a caution, thankfully. We want to keep this battle alive and going. Hopefully he's just actually crashed and unfortunately that unfortunately, has put an end to it. <laughs> so, um, but uh, really, really great driving there from Jones and uh, Gallagher as well. Skirlock and Dautanik really looking to get into the battle and uh, closing up just then as uh, Justin Howe unfortunately had uh, what uh, looks like in the scripting like a, a really big tank slapper moment but we'll, uh, we'll have a look at what's going on there oh no he's just gone into Aiden Schultz so um, I've just gone back and have a look at that one and Justin Howe's gone down into Aiden Schultz across the trioval there um, just cut straight across Schultz's nose there and then uh, spun out across the track into the wall heavy contact with the front as well and uh, that's going to be a uh, that's going to be a very uh very costly mistake unfortunately as i said the uh, the luck of aiden schultz has struck again this season uh not having the best of seasons up here in the truck sadly uh just getting caught in the front hopefully not too much damage to that car but that will affect him right, quickly just try and have a look at that from schultz's perspective just try and bring that one back up there if we can of course with all the pit stops happening it can be uh, quite difficult there Looks like Schultz might have got away with it a little bit. Just rolled across the nose of the car, so... That's, um... Yeah, we might, uh... Just have one more look at that, and I don't want to bore you to death with it, but, uh... I can actually even catch it, given the activity going on in pit lane, and, uh, all the information that's coming through. Just gonna have a it's look at another... It's easier said than done sometimes, unfortunately. So we'll go back to that here, I think. just missed it so we're not able to quite bring that up there but it actually looks like Schultz might have got away with that one um luckily because he certainly uh, if anyone is entitled to it um a little Schultz entitled to a little bit of luck uh, after getting driven into a couple of times um across the last couple of weeks so uh, hopefully yeah it doesn't look like there's too much damage that's Riley Curtis of course so that doesn't help us at all um but uh Aiden Schultz there that uh, damage from the earlier incident that he equally just managed to miss a few very close calls there for Schultz. So, um, yeah, some, some very close moments out there tonight. Back under caution here. Good time for us very quickly to mention again, AJ Insurance Services, our broadcast partner and with Ferguson Group Media, company behind our broadcast. Uh, Bridgestone Select and Virtual Motorsport Mentor, Chris Purnell, not out there tonight, but his drivers in his team doing a great job. Michael Scott currently in third. And uh, Luke Trujillo at the moment down in 17th. Let's say he's ducked into pit lane and maybe got a little bit of repair done and uh, grabbed a new set of tyres on his Crank Esports car. Yeah, the, the, the main lead pack were jumping into pit lane very quickly there, um, getting those fresh fresh tyres on there nice and sticky and uh, back with some rubber on them that's going to help them out for the rest of this race for sure. Uh, our fourth caution period of the evening. We are most innocuous so far, which is good. I don't see too many drivers getting involved where they can avoid it. They don't want to either. No surprises there. So biggest mover of the night so far. Actually, Matty Raymond currently up 20 positions. Uh, and he did pit with this lead pack, so... He is uh, biggest mover of the evening. Currently sitting in 10th. Again, one of those drivers with a lot of experience behind him. Um, Matty Raymond there, you know, uh, a lot of experience in the field. And it, it does help a lot when you have uh, those sort of issues out on track. You know, you see the experienced drivers, they tend to avoid those wrecks a little bit more often than not just because they sort of, you can almost see it coming. It's like a second, uh, sort of like a little bit of future sight almost. You know there's going to be an incident happening, so you sort of ease off a little bit before it hits you. Uh, of course, you're not always that lucky. 
uh, but uh, you'll see a lot of those drivers, they just manage to seem to avoid wrecks at all costs. Um, when, when they can, they avoid them, obviously, but sometimes there are wrecks that you just can't get away from, and uh, those are the ones that hurt the most, I think. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, innocent bystander. Nobody wants to be that car, so... But uh, at this stage, Josh Micklemore, Hamish Gallagher, I think very much in a strong position. It's still too early to call, of course. So we've still got plenty of laps to go here at Kansas. Yeah, 56 laps to go here as the pace car is going to come into pit lane very, very shortly. And you're going to see Josh Micklemore and Hamish Gallagher on the outside there. Uh, they're going to lead the field off, and I imagine again we're going to see a sort of a little bit of teamwork together with them, uh, driving off at similar paces as they go away. Josh McMore retains the lead, Hamish Gallagher just behind him, Ryan Jones getting a fairly okay start, but Michael Scurlock is going to get underneath him, and he's going to try and press the advantage to start chasing down the two Mitch Motorsport boys of Gallagher and McMore. As they do quite nicely just get into that single file. Despite that damage, Ryan Jones has got quite a pacey truck out there tonight. He's managing it quite well. Uh, not the most patient of drivers. Oh, that's behind. Mekko Dornek goes around. Mekko Dornek just getting spun there. Big, big incident behind them. That's going to bring out the caution. There is a solid half a dozen cars involved in that one. Just managing to uh, to jump onto it just in time to see it unfold. Unfortunately, there's a couple of nights over there. As you can see, those cars smoking. It might be uh, Riley Curtis, Brody Masters. Potentially out of it there. Just trying to catch that 93 as well. I think that might even be Cam James. My apologies. So, a few cars involved in that one. Let's uh, grab a replay. Yeah. Um, Norman Clark, Christopher Finlay, uh, Bradley Masters, uh, Riley Curtis. They're all getting big hits in that one. Uh, a lot of the drivers just saying they could not see a thing there. As Marco Jornak just lost the car going through turn number four there. The back end just started stepping out on him and he just couldn't catch it in time. And those drivers were just basically driving in blind there. It is very hard to see when you come in there. Um, I don't know if we can, if we can jump on board to say maybe Riley Curtis there, you'll see just how thick that white smoke is and you can barely see a thing as you come into an incident like that. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do exactly that and have a look at it from on board. Um... You just see all the bump and shove there as we're on board with uh, Cam James. Just uh, go back again and have a look at it from Curtis's perspective here. You can just see there off in the distance just the smoke starting and really you got no idea on where you can go with that Riley Curtis on board there. He's just got cars coming at him. And next thing you know, you're facing the oncoming traffic there's nothing you can do about it no absolutely this smoke has been an absolute game changer in iRacing um it has really affected a lot of drivers and a lot of incidents as well this came out with the last build and it is much much thicker and harder to see through and a lot of drivers are just saying you cannot see a thing when that happens uh which is how it is uh when you get a lot of tire smoke on the track anyway so it makes it much much more uh, realistic in that respect but it does make things harder for these guys uh, when you do have a wreck on one of these big ovals all of a sudden you're driving through a big white cloud you can't see anything in front of you and you've just got to pray that you're going to make it through without any damage this is on board from uh, luke traher's no it's not because it keeps changing on me luke traher's perspective you can see he's just managed to make it through just on the top side of the track there while uh, all hell unleashes itself down on the low side so um, he got a little bit lucky there as well to make his way through um, on that one. Yeah, that was a uh, lucky moment for Luke, and that's given him the opportunity to get up to P8 now. So his recovery drive is going quite well at the moment. Um, he's got himself up into the top 10 at the moment and uh, doing a great job of it. Uh, also just up there as well. Uh, man, that's <laughs> we've, as we said, been unlucky a few times tonight, but Aiden Schultz up there in 10th place at the moment. Uh, he's managed to get that car, despite it being quite battered, up into P10 at the moment. So good job there. Steve Williams still in 9th place. That car is still looking pretty pristine at the moment. I think maybe a couple of slight little glances on there, but nothing major. He's just sitting there, just waiting for this race to unfold, not pushing it too hard, not really... 
uh, not really looking to go for it too hard at the moment, just waiting for that latter half of the race and that last sort of that last twenty five percent of the race before he starts pushing for the uh, the final places of his race. Absolutely. So once again, a little bit of luck needed here tonight at Kansas. We are back with our race leaders. Just waiting for the restart to happen. The lights are out on the truck, so we'll be racing again. Micklemore and Gallagher here are going to be looking to get away. And again, the perfect opportunity for the teammates there. Once more, as they line up side by side, uh, they're going to be able to, uh, uh, you know, cur uh, work out their start you can say and that's something that really helps when you've got those teammates up there if you've got teammates next to you you can work things out on the radio you can start thinking about options for you and with luke Trahir working his way up the pack as he is now this could be good news for michael scurlock uh, as Trahir gets closer and closer Trahir manages to get up into that top four area he may be able to help scurlock out in the latter stages of this race and vice versa so you know it's all big things getting your teammates up there is very important you know, we did say that the uh, incident he was involved in was early enough that uh, if you got uh, a little bit of luck, he was going to be able to make his way back up to the front here as the pace truck pulls back in. And we're going to go green racing again. And it is Micklemore and Gallagher to take you away. But Skurlock, Jones, Priest, Wellman, Traher, Raymond, Schultz and Stephen Williams still in 10th position as we get back underway here halfway through round seven at Kansas and a good restart there at the front. There is a three wide battle going on a little bit further down the pack for a 13th and 14th between Kay Donnelly, Troy Davidson, Justin Howe at the moment. Uh, but it's uh, battles all across the field at the moment. It's just getting an idea where to look. It looks like that uh, mid pack with Howe, uh, Davidson uh, at the moment, and Donnelly are looking a bit racy. On board with them, the Sim boys working together. Got uh, the Activity Hub Bali 23 with Raymond Jager. We've got Justin Howe involved there as well as Howe moves down onto the low side. We're trying to get underneath the 23 of Troy Davison. He's doing that there. Very close there on the exit. Troy Davidson just gets a little bit loose just from that little bit of side draft, and that's going to cost him a couple of positions just dropping back a little bit there. Going to be a little careful. Meanwhile, up the front, Ryan Jones is now putting the pressure onto Michael Skurlock. So, Ryan Jones, again, like a pit bull, he's constantly attacking, attacking, attacking. Uh, Skurlock going a bit wide there, actually, and that's going to give Jones the opportunity to get through and get a good run on the leaders. So, you're going to see Jones start to get a bit of a run. Gary Wellman up there as well in fifth place. Good run for Gary Wellman up there as well. So, he's going to try and put the pressure on to Skurlock now as well. Good close there by Jones as well. Now he's right up behind on the back bumper of Hamish Gallagher. And he's going to start going to work again, seeing whether or not he can make something work down the inside. Just to back out of it a little bit there, I think, but he has managed to make the switch down onto the inside line. Very close indeed. He's running as close as he can at the moment. The one thing he's got to just keep an eye out for is if he's done any damage to the cooling of that car as it gets a little bit looser, and that's going to give Skull the opportunity to get back at him. But running that close to Hamish Gallagher, uh, he's got to be careful of the uh, the temperatures of those car, of that car, sorry, uh, as if he's got a little bit of damage to the radiators, he will start to struggle. And it is so easy for those engines to overheat and all of a sudden you lose those ponies and they do not come back. He's down underneath Hamish Gallagher here. Ooh, as we've got a caution. We've got a caution in the mid-pack. Uh, looks like... Looks like Justin Howe and Raymond Jaeger got together across the tribal section there. I just brought that one up on screen there. Just going to slow it down a little bit just so if we can see what happened there. Down on the bottom of the screen there, it looks like uh, the uh, move across the nose. And Howes, unfortunately, just uh, managed to pick him up. 
spun him around. Yeah, very close there between the two. I think Howard got a little bit more draft than he expected and just caught Ray, uh, Raymond Jaeger just underneath there, just spinning the activity of Bali car around. Um, and unfortunately, easy thing to do. Luckily for Jaeger, it doesn't look like there's been too much damage done to the front of that car, a little bit of damage to the left. Uh, Justin Howe as well, going to have a little bit of damage on there, uh, but he's already carrying some damage on that car. So uh, again, it's been a bit of a rough night for that lad's racing car. This is interesting. Certainly, uh, we've had some. Just checking here. So it did have it that um, Ryan Jones wasn't past Hamish Gallagher there, as the caution period, or it does go back to the last full lap. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, Ryan Jones will just have to drop in there, but he's coming to the pit lane. So has... Ryan Jones, uh, Gary Wellman, uh, Matty Raymond, Luke Trahir, Dwayne Priest, uh, Stephen Williams, um, Todd Maxford, pretty much everybody but those lead three have come into pit lane. Uh, so the main leaders, so you've got uh, Micklemore, Gallagher, Skirloff, Schultz out there. They've chosen to stay out there a little bit longer uh, and stay out on these tyres, which have done about 15 laps on my uh, on my computer, it's saying. Uh, so they're going to have slightly worn tyres as they go back to racing. This is going to be an interesting restart now. Uh, these guys are going to be a bit of sitting ducks, and it could be good news for Ryan Jones and Gary Wellman. And of course, the godfather of oval track racing in Australia, Ed Foster's just jumped in and let us know um, that it is the position at the time the yellow is thrown, uh, which is interesting. It must have been... But a hair between them, because uh, we were watching the pass as it unfolded uh, when the caution period was thrown. So, be that as it may, pit stops taken, and uh, there'll be some more work to do for Ryan Jones to get back up into this lead group if they don't decide to run through pit lane at this point in time. Yeah, with, um, with as it stands, we're going to see if it, if it remains green and nothing happens here. Ryan Jones is going to come up and get up to the front of this race relatively quickly. Probably going to see um, Matty Raymond and Gary Wellman, Luke Trahir as well. Those guys are all going to get up ahead of those leaders too. But they'll get a good start on the straight across that tribal section. But as soon as they come through turn number one and two, uh, those positions are going to start looking a little bit dicey. Then when they come onto that... That, that first lap on green, you're going to see people like Jones battling for the front of this race, I would say. So it's going to be a very spicy restart here. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what these leaders are planning for the rest of the race. Obviously, they have got something in their mind. Um, they've got something planned for, for the rest of this race. We're only on, we're on lap 58, so we've got 42 laps remaining. So maybe they're counting down the race a little bit. Or, as we said earlier, maybe they didn't check the tyre allocation. Uh, so maybe they're thinking they've got a few less tyres than they expect. So that could be part of the reasoning why they stayed out. The other reasoning as well could be a bit fuel-related or something like that. So I have to see how this shakes out. Um, it's uh, got to say at the moment, though, that was a that's going to be a very, very good moment for Ryan Jones, Matthew Raymond, Gary Wellman and Luke here. They're going to have a very fun restart here. About to say, Matthew Raymond now 24 spots up, even with that pit stop taken into account. So he is having a really great night so far, moving the uh, 83 up into sixth uh, as we sit at the moment. Let's jump on board with him, actually. And uh, his car looking in a good nick, too. So he is well positioned as well. Yeah, that 83 is looking very clean at the moment, not looking like there's much to any damage on that uh, Chevrolet Silverado as well. So looking good for him, uh, as you can say. Uh, Gary Wellman, a bit of damage on the front. Ryan Jones, a bit of damage on the front. Luke Trahir, of course, damage to the front. A lot of those drivers around them have got some form of damage to them. So really, it's uh, you're looking at the sort of people that are damaging that sort of top top 10 is pretty much just uh, Dwayne Priest, who's got a tiny bit of damage to that car's uh, one of the, the rear portions, I think he's got a little bit of a nick on that, and uh, Matthew Raymond, those cars are very clean and of course the leaders, but 
those leaders are on some very old tyres. This restart's going to be a really interesting one as the pace car comes in and we're going to go back to green flag racing here at Kansas. Once again, Micklemore and Gallagher get away. Skurlock on the low side. And try and slot in behind them. Aiden Schultz, good run for him so far. Avoiding a lot of damage. But uh, we're keeping our eyes on the cars behind them. Aiden Jones, Matthew Raymond Jones just down underneath. Schultz there. They're just getting a run on. They're watching the triple one of Jones. 83 of Matthew Raymond and 43 of Luke Traher just in behind him as the first of the fresh tyre brigade and look at Jones there just eating Aiden Schultz up down on the apron and moving himself straight up into fourth position he is not wasting any time whatsoever you're going to see some great pace out of Jones right now and he's just going to have such an easy time going underneath these cars as those drivers on those slightly older tyres won't be able to hit that low line quite as aggressive as him. He's going to have that little bit more uh, grip on there. He's going to be able to put the car where he wants to be putting it as well, while those other drivers will have to just let the car sit where it sits. And you can see Jones now getting a run on Josh Micklemore for the lead right now. Josh Micklemore's going to come down, try and block him in a little bit. He's going to want Hamish Gallagher to try and keep that high line, try and keep Jones in behind him, but there's not much he can do as his car just runs a little bit higher up there. He can't do anything to keep it down on that bottom line. Ryan Jones is going to go underneath him and go straight through into the lead here for Ryan Jones. Fantastic bit of vision for us to be able to bring to you. He's uh, made it look as easy as you suggested it was going to be. Much fresher tyres, choosing to pit. And, of course, uh, right behind on his way through as well is Matty Raymond who's uh, moved up into fifth position now. He's got past Aiden Schultz. So he'll be looking to try and make light work of Michael Skurlock. The traffic a little bit more congested with uh, Schultz there running in that higher line. So Raymond having to go around the outside. He is right behind Hamish Gallagher. Yeah, Aiden Schultz did a great job of defending on that start and kept a few of those cars behind him a little bit. Uh, so he's done a good job of keeping people back there. What you're going to notice now, though, is Ryan Jones isn't going to start pulling away uh, with great speed because he's going to be lacking that top speed of those other cars with that front damage. He's not going to be able to have the, the pace out the front that he'll want. Uh, the person to look for now is going to be Matty Raymond. If Matty Raymond can get up here and behind Jones or even in front of him, you should be able to see him just starting to eat away a little bit if this run continues. Luke Traher as well, making a good run now as well. He's starting to force positions up. He's just sitting behind Matty Raymond. He's got past Aiden Schultz, and he's going to try and get up there behind his teammate of Skurlock. Just be able to work together on those fresher tyres as well to get a little bit of push along. Benefit both of them, but as you say, Traher will be wanting to try and work with Skurlock where he can. Maybe box Matty Raymond up into the higher line to get progress up through the pack get up to the front of the field so Jones not quite able to open up much of a margin at this point in time because of that damage on the front of his truck so we're looking for someone to drag him along if he can get it yeah he's going to want to have somebody uh, he's going to need that little bit of help or he's going to need those people behind him to have their tyres just drop off the cliff a little bit which can absolutely happen of course um, that could be another thing that happens in a few laps of this race as they've done uh, 24 laps now on those tyres, 25 laps I should say, on those tyres while as Ryan Jones only done 10 so their tyres might start dropping off a little bit more than Jones and he might be able to put up a bit of a lead but it's going to be hard for him to press the advantage I'd say uh, at the moment it looks like Manny Raymond's just dropping into position he's not really pushing too hard, he's just keeping back there, keeping an eye on things and uh, not really pushing it all that hard. Same as Luke Traher, they just eased off a little bit. Um, rather than pushing the cars too hard and eating their tyres up too quickly, he, they're playing the slightly longer game. Uh, so again, you might see Ryan Jones just starting to overheat his tyres as he overdrives a little bit and then start falling back in the order a little bit quicker than some of those cars around him. But he's doing a good job up there at the moment in front of Josh Micklemore, who you can say Josh Micklemore and Hamish Gallagher, as well as Michael Scarlock, doing a fantastic job on those older tyres to keep their positions in second, third and fourth. The other one who's maintained the uh, proximity here is Dwayne Priest, another one on fresh tyres. Uh, before we get back to uh, Gary Wellman too, and then Aiden Schultz, the first of our non-pitters. You can see the gap there behind, uh, but Gary Wellman has uh, joined on to this grouping. 
So Trujillo's got those drivers behind him. As you say, uh, letting the race come to them a little bit at this point in time. That's it. And of course, the longer we run green here, the, the more it's going to pay off for those drivers that came in a little bit later. Um, those drivers on those slightly fresher tyres, they'll be able to go a little bit longer here. Oh, as Ryan Jones just gets a little bit sideways coming through uh, turn number four there. Uh, that's going to give Micklemore the opportunity to get a bit of a run on him here. Will, will he have the pace to make the advantage? We'll soon find out as he tries to look high. Can't quite make the move done yet, though. Uh, but Brian Jones getting a little bit loose there through the corners, which suggests he might have put a bit too much heat through those tyres a bit too quick and is now starting to struggle a little bit. Yeah, it's interesting when you've got a car that's uh, the 31 of Josh Micklemore, 15 laps to the poorer in terms of tyre wear, understanding that there was a caution period within that, so the three or so laps uh, under that period, not too much distress to that product, but uh, is certainly... Uh, managing to keep up at this point in time without too much drama. Yeah, doing a good job back there at the moment. Uh, Aiden Schultz is just dropping off a bit. Uh, one of those cars that did stay out, he's just dropped down to 11th place, I believe. So his, his tyres are just starting to drop off. You can see now um, that Ryan Jones is just starting to pull a bit of a gap. And you can see Matthew Raymond as well. Uh, as I said, Matty Raymond's just starting to put some pressure on now. The pace is coming into his car. So he's just waited a little bit there, waiting for those lead drivers to start falling back a little bit, just start losing the pace and start catching up to a few of those lapped cars. Now he's starting to press that advantage. And with that nice clean car, he should have a bit more pace as it goes along. You'll see him side by side here with Josh Micklemore. He's gonna take that inside line. He should be able to have a little bit better pace through there, but he's gonna to wanna to try and start catching up to Ryan Jones now. Uh, who's managed to break away a little bit from the front pack. There's about half a second between them. Uh, but Ryan Jones has managed to pull a bit of a lead now and break away from that main pack. But I imagine we'll see them catching up quite quickly once they get back into some sort of uh, rhythm here. You can just see the pace difference there as we look out the back of Matty Raymond's car, back to Josh Micklemore. Just the pace down through a turn. Just able to uh, get the thing to uh, handle that line better. And you can look at the gap he's pulling away from him now. And uh, he has definitely opened up a margin very, very quickly there. Already three, nearly four tenths out to second place. And as you say, he'll be catching up to Ryan Jones very, very shortly indeed. His older tyres starting to wear. Yeah, you can see Hamish Gallagher just dropping back now. He's almost dropped back uh, just behind Dwayne Priest. And now is the time to start watching Luke Traher as well, uh, just pointed out by Edward Foster there in the chat. Uh, Luke Traher is going to start pushing forwards a little bit now too. Um, so he's having a really good comeback from that early crash on lap number one, uh, just to come back here. And he's starting to catch Micklemore up the front. So there you can see Traher just starting to charge through. He's going to get help from his teammate as well. You can see Michael Skull just almost pushing that car along. He's stuck in right behind him. So the two crank eSport cars are going to start trying to work together a little bit here to try and get Traher up ahead of Micklemore, who will start hemorrhaging positions as these laps start counting down. Skirlock will probably have the same problem in a few laps too. Uh, meanwhile, up the front, the gap is closing a little bit between, uh, between Manny Raymond and Ryan Jones, but the battle is at the moment between third, fourth positions. We, we uh, jumped on right at the right moment there to get coverage of the battle here for third, fourth and fifth. Um, what's the strategy from here? If, it, if we are green flag until the end, do they jump in or are they going to make it from lap 41 fuel-wise uh, and uh, tyre-wise to the end? Fuel-wise, they should make it no problem. Um, you might see those guys that stayed out starting to struggle a little bit on those tyres. Um, they will need another caution to make this one work, I think. Uh, you can see already how much Josh Micklemore is starting to struggle with that car. Hamish Gallagher as well, you saw him drop back those positions, and Gallagher's one of those guys that can keep tyres on quite well. Uh, Josh Micklemore doing a fantastic job of keeping third place at the moment, but he is definitely struggling. Uh, so it's going to be a thing of... They're, they're going to want another caution coming out relatively soon so they can come in for those fresh tyres, get an equal playing field, because... If it stays as it is, you've got to say it's looking good for people like Ryan Jones, Manny Raymond, Luke Trier, Gary Wellman, Dwayne Priest, um, while the people like uh, Michael Skurlock, 
Hamish Gallagher and Josh Micklemore are going to start struggling as this race goes on. You can see Gary Wellman making a move on Luke Traher right now, trying to go down the inside of the 43 there, the 45 just sticking his nose down the inside. They're going to try and hold that inside line as they go through turns three and four, get onto the triangle section. Should get a little bit of a run here on Luke and try and make that move stick. Uh, and he does make it pass, so Wellman's going to start putting the pressure on to Josh Micklemore now. Of course, the more that those guys battle behind Micklemore, the more relief he's going to get. He's going to get a little bit of a reprieve. Yeah, absolutely. He'll be happy for that. Um, but, of course, those two cars will be able to work together. Well, look at the difference in pace just on the entrance into the corner there. Again, between the fresher tyres on Wellman's car and Josh Micklemore, it's really, really where he's going to be susceptible. Yeah, you can hear on board the cars uh, when when you sort of get close to them. Uh, you can hear how much Josh Micklemore is having to lift out into the mid corner section, mid corners, uh, whereas people like Wellman and Traher able to keep a little bit more acceleration in there. Um, just getting on the radio that Aiden Schultz is coming into pit lane, so Aiden Schultz is going to pit this lap. Uh, so he thinks that there's going to be another pit stop possibly, and if it remains green, this could work out well for Schultz. We did see some late race drama last week, of course, so don't go anywhere. 20 laps to go means absolutely nothing for this one. A couple of our races have been decided just in the last three-lap period, so don't go anywhere. We're riding on board with Gary Wellman now just to listen to that point you made. is just closing up there as well. On board now with Micklemore. Got a little bit loose there. And that's the problem that Micklemore will have is that car's going to get looser and looser so you're going to have to lift off a little bit more and a little bit more as it goes through. The main corners they're going to be lifting on is turns three and four, those last set of corners. And you can see this time oh. Oh, Micklemore up into the wall with Wilma behind him. Trahir catching the back of them. Big, big impact there for Micklemore. Uh, that was a big, big crunch there. And a very, very lucky for Trahir. And... Not so much for Wellman. Not... Wellman got a lot of damage there. Uh, so Gary Wellman is going to be struggling a little bit. He's going to have to get back into pace with that one. Trahir's going to have to get used to that car, just, just work out exactly what's happening there. Big, big gain in that one was Dwayne Priest, who's jumped up to third position. He's got a very clean-looking car. He's on those fresh tyres. So he's now got to try and keep Trahir behind him. So good news for uh, Dwayne Priest there. Uh, bad news there for Luke Trahir, Josh Micklemore, and, of course, Gary Wellman. That's... Uh, Big, big hit for Wellman. It doesn't look like, uh, again, Traher got too much damage out of that one. Just more having to try and avoid it and get down into the low line to uh, to get out of it. He managed to do just that, but of course that earlier damage, Priest's car uh, in really, really good standing. So, put it on the same lap, you would expect these two will fight it out from here for third position. Michael Skirlock behind him on older tyres. Hamish Gallagher, the same. And Steve Williams uh, currently up into 7th. We've got Kay Donnelly up into 8th. That's a good recovery from him. Uh, Josh Micklemore in ninth. We've got Jamie Nankervis up into 10th position. A good drive from him as well. And just look at P7. Steve Williams there just sat in P7. He's really been quite quiet tonight. He's not been pushing it too hard. Not really been uh, that aggressive all evening. But just keeping it in a good position for his championship, position, uh, championship hopes. Uh, he's right behind Hamish Gallagher now. He's going to start struggling. Uh, you're going to see Hamish Gallagher just struggling through those corners, similar to Josh Micklemore. He's just going to start running up a little bit higher, a little bit higher, having to lift a little bit more and a little bit more. Uh, so you're probably just going to see Stephen Williams getting past Gallagher at some point in the near future. At the front, just big, big, uh, big, big hat off to Ryan Jones at the moment, who's pulled a second lead over Matthew Raymond, doing a fantastic job in that Toyota Tundra, the Sim Speed car there. Um, with Ryan Jones on board, having a fantastic run out the front at the moment, really driving around any damage that he has and driving around any problems that he has, taking a great lead at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. He's really run away with this one after uh, stalking the leaders all night. 
for that last stop that he made and then just driving straight through them like they weren't even on the track. Yeah, those, those that stop for fresh tyres was the big, big, uh, well, the nail in the coffin for those leaders. Uh, staying out was not the best idea there. That really did cost them quite a lot of time and quite a lot of places, unfortunately. Uh, but, of course, the race is not over. We still have 12 laps remaining. And anything can happen in motorsport, and it usually does. Absolutely. So, as you mentioned, Steve Williams this, uh, will just continue to manage his position as he's just moved up into sixth now, manages his position in the championship lead uh, with a couple of the challenges not running tonight as well. So... Uh, He'll be looking to focus in on the back of Michael Skurlock. Potentially take that position. 12 to go. Much, much fresher rubber. And a very clean car. So keep an eye on that one. The real battle here, though, for position is between Priest and Luke Traher. Traher with a little bit of damage on his car. Dwayne Priest with nothing. So it's really Priest's to lose. Currently in yeah. third position. I've got to say, at the moment, Priest is looking good for that P3. Um, as it stands, Traher just doesn't quite have the pace at the moment. After that second, after that tap, uh, when we saw uh, Micklemore go up into the wall, it looks like Traher has just lost a little bit of pace there. Just not able to quite catch as much as possible as uh, Matty Raymond's coming into the pit lane. So from P2, Matthew Raymond coming into pit lane. A very, very interesting move. Mech out of Tannic. Uh, has crashed in the background, has not triggered a caution period. Um, and that is a very, very interesting move from Matty Raymond. Um, he did pit in this lead group. So I don't know if he's playing the gamble for the win to see if there's another caution period. Um, not entirely sure of the strategy behind that one. Well, if everybody else has to make one more stop tonight, then that could be a... Uh could be a good decision but with only nine laps to go i'd, I'd say people could make it um they've they've just done um well, they're up to 35 laps at the front there so it's a 35 lap stint at the moment uh people like scurlock and gallagher and micklemore are on about 50 laps in this stint so not 100 percent sure there i think we're going to see this could be interesting if people need to pit then this is going to really throw a spanner in the works for a lot of drivers, as Ryan Jones is coming in. Ryan Jones, I think, may be coming in. No, nope, Skurlock is coming in, though. Uh, Ryan Jones just eased off the accelerator there. Uh, it almost looked like he was pitting in. But Skurlock is pitting in now. So we've got drivers coming into pit lane. Uh, this is going to be an interesting finish. It's definitely not over yet. Just on board with Jones here. Steve Williams now up to fourth position. Um, having just uh, spoken about him managing his race, he's just quite quietly moved up into fourth. So if uh, no more stops remaining, that's a, a really solid drive from him as well. Yeah, of course, one of the things Stephen Williams could have been doing was just holding back, not pushing the car too hard, just uh, just basically saving fuel and saving tyres there as um, as Josh Micklemore comes into the pit lane now too. Uh, and so says Hamish got... Gallagher. Yeah, and Hamish as well. So yeah, those cars need to pit one last time. It's gonna... The big question now is can those guys make it to the end of the race the ones that pitted earlier on can they make it right to the end here if they can they're looking very good if of course if it doesn't work out then it's going to start costing them quite a bit and uh Traher has moved right up on the back of Dwayne Priest here as well so he is pushing they'd have to think if they weren't sure they were going to make it that they'd probably be easing now they've got a good gap but uh certainly not No, they're not easing off too much from what I can hear. They're starting to lift a bit more through the corners. Uh, Brian Jones definitely lifting and coasting a little bit as he comes into the corner, a bit more than he was before. Um, but that just could be just keeping the car in a nice position for him. But you can see he's being caught by Dwayne Priest and Luke Traher at quite a vast rate of knots. Those guys were around about, uh, about two seconds behind him a few laps ago. Ryan Jones is starting to lose pace at quite Rapidly. a fast race. Whilst as a caution comes out, we've got a caution out. Todd Maxfield has gone off. So this is going to mean a... Oh! Oh, jeez. Um, 
big, big incident there. Uh, I think Todd Maxwell came up onto the race track there. Uh, we'll try and watch that one again. Um, yeah, I've just got to roll this back. Let's do that. So he's come across and he's rolled up and he's just kept rolling oh, up onto what the track. Is that? His right. Scarlock's gone into him. Aiden Schultz has gone into him. Huge, huge damage there. That is. What were you doing? Um, that is a. That is devastating there. That oh. is an absolute. Uh, Scarlock will be uh, inventing new words to describe how he feels right now. That is an amazing. Thing there. I'm not I'm wondering if he's had an equipment failure because after he's hit the wall, he's continued to roll around further back onto the track again. Um, just seems amazing that uh, that uh, he wouldn't have stopped. He's still moving on track now, so uh, didn't jump out immediately to the pits as you'd expect uh, after someone that has just jumped to the pits now. So um, something there, yeah, something there has gone wrong, I think, with that car. Um, or with potentially some of his sim gear. Uh, it certainly doesn't look like something that normally would take place. No, something really strange happened there. Um, yeah, not sure on that one. That's going to be uh, one to, to have a look at after the race, of course. Um, Where? That, that's uh, that's brought a very interesting... <laughs> uh, that's, that's made this very interesting as we've got two and a half laps remaining. Um, so... Uh, sorry, I, I think we were both busy looking back at that one. We um, were. And I'm just trying to figure out what's actually happened with pits and things like so that. Luke, so Luke Traher's chosen to duck into pit lane. So he's gone through. Ryan Jones has gone through, uh, as well as uh, Tom Huggan. We've had Carl Hoffman's jump in as well. So Dwayne Priest, Steve Williams, Kate Donnelly, currently your top three having pit on lap 56. Uh, we will, of course, have uh, the uh, dash to the end here. So it's how quickly those fresh tyres are going to allow these drivers to make their way through the pack. Ryan Jones in eighth at the restart will be the uh, first of the cars on fresh rubber. Yeah, that was... Um, that's going to be interesting. We're, uh, we're probably going to see uh, green, white checker here i think yeah. yes we will so we'll see the green white checker here tonight um this has worked out incredibly well for that person we were saying that's been looking after that car all night stephen williams um that sort of he he stayed up there of course uh, so a few people chose to stay out as you said um uh jamie uh nakervis there up in fourth another big mover there and on his uh opening night good to be up in those positions uh, so this is going to be a tough one now. Ryan Jones is going to have to really put the uh, the pace on on that green white checker. It's got Luke Traher behind him as well, so it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Yeah, I'm not really sure how far they can come with the situation that is in front of them. Basically, two laps get some heat in and, and make moves. It's going to be interesting. Be better to finish uh, eighth or ninth than to uh, wreck your night and end up finishing down in the teens. So, well, we have seen um, just from the what well, we've seen in the first couple of times when we've had these restarts, when people have started on those older tyres, that they have been able to keep them alive a little bit for that first lap to a two lap period. But these guys are on uh, tyres that are 43 laps old now. So they are incredibly old tyres. They're going to have to be very careful not to loop it at the start, being very cautious of that. Of course, if we get a caution come out, then that's it for the race. So it could be uh, tears for some people and uh, a great victory for others. But if they can keep it going, that's going to be the question. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be uh, a very, very interesting end. Yeah. Drivers out the front are going to be wanting to uh, obviously stay where they can, maintain their position, battle away on those old tyres. But uh, there are a number of three, in fact, it's Jones, Traher and Hoffman, uh, Huggin, I should say, who we are looking at uh, currently running down in 8th, 9th and 10th in this pack. So let's see how this restart fares. 
Lights are out on the pace truck. It's going to be a bit of a tornado here on this restart for sure as Dwayne Priest is going to lead away as the pace car comes in. We're going to go back to green flag racing here at Kansas Speedway. Well, there's a, a number of drivers moved up to the top there and blocked one another. Dwayne Priest got a great restart. Steve Williams has gone with him, as has Cade Donnelly. Where are our fast cars, fresh tyres? Luke Traher already up into sixth position, fifth position now as we do the sprint. How is this going to fan out? Pan out, I should say, as I just start inventing words. On board here with Raymond Yeager. He's on old tyres. He's trying to defend Luke Traher. Traher. He's not able to do that. Traher here is on. He is on. To f we get to the final lap. I don't even know what to say here. He's currently up into third. It's Williams and Priest in front of him. K. Donnelly on the older tyres. Traher, he's going to look to run his way through to the lead of this one. He is eating them up. Steve Williams is going to be next in line. As he goes down the inside here, he's going to look to try and get a run on Dwayne Priest. We've got a third of a lap to go here. He's going to get it done. Traher's going to get it done. Just Jones is going him. with him. Jones, so it's going to be Ryan Jones and Traher here. This is going to be a really close finish between those two. It looks like Traher's going to make it, though, as he comes across the line. What? One. What what have we just seen? Amazing finish. Luke Traher, Ryan Jones, take a bow, both of you. What a drive as we get it back underway. And uh, those two drivers, fresh tyres, drive from 8th and 9th, respectively, to take out the win and second place. Dwayne Priest, a race well driven from him in third. And a uh, notable mention as well to championship leader Steve Williams, who brings home fourth place with uh, probably the only truck in the uh, top... No, along with Dwayne Priest, I should say, uh, the only trucks they could return to the uh, dealership um, and uh, hand the keys back. Luke Traher, third uh, win for him in this season. So he will be uh, certainly making sure that the motor on that one doesn't see next week and a brilliant drive having dropped right back to the back of the field uh, early on in the race so congratulations to him and the Crank Esports team for a race well run and despite having poor luck for a couple of their drivers the Mark 1 uh, Esport guys managed to get uh, Tom Huggan up there in 5th place his, his uh, 5th place debut there, um, brilliant job uh, getting up there for him. Kate Donnelly there in sixth with Carl Hoffman seventh. Raymond Yeager finished eighth. Jamie Nakavara, again, the first race in the series, getting P9 at the end. Good job for him. And Troy Davidson as well, uh, one of the slightly newer drivers to the series, up in P10. So great job there from some of the younger drivers in the series. And again, trucks delivering for a fantastic finish. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a tenth at the end. Uh, between Traher and Jones, and that's only because they were nose to tail. Uh, what a great finish uh, from those two. Just uh, bring that one back up on the screen. Yeah, it's one of the, one of those that I, uh, I reckon will be a fun watch from inside the car um, of Traher and Jones because that was one heck of a finish for those guys. Uh, it looks like the cars ahead of them, you saw a lot of cars getting scruffy ahead of them, and that was just because the tyres were just dropping off of those cars. They couldn't get their foot off the floor. Then all of a sudden, they just get that launch, their tyres switch on, and away they run. Brilliant driving there from both Traher and Jones. Yeah, absolutely. As we have just dragged both of them into the combox, guys, what a finish. Um Dwayne Priest joining us as well. So Luke Traher, Ryan Jones, Dwayne Priest, our top three for this evening. Uh, and Luke, we'll obviously start with you. Congratulations on the win. Um, a, uh, a Larry Perkins-esque for those circuit races uh, drive from you tonight, starting basically at the rear of the field very early on in the race and uh, just managing to get it done there with a 10th uh, over Ryan Jones uh, at the finish. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks, mate. I... Um... Early on, I wasn't quite sure how to drive the track. Um, I haven't really. I think I've been here once, and I was talking to Skirly, my teammate, obviously through the race, and I, I couldn't keep up with the pack out ahead. And I had a little bit of an incident earlier where I thought it maybe took a little bit of damage, and was wondering if that's what was sort of keeping me sort of slow. Um, and then it just sort of started dawning on me that 
just got to pick up the pace and that bottom line just wraps um, like it was doing for everyone and it, it sort of, you know, sunk in lucky um, when it sort of counted. So uh, good to come back and get the win after a dismal qualifying performance. Oh, well, it was a, uh, a drive well done and you took the gamble as well of uh, pitting there uh, when you were making good pace on the leaders anyway uh, going into that last caution period. Probably uh, roll the dice. Yeah, I'll be honest. It was one of those situations again, um, like Bristol, where I just sort of hit the panic button and said, I, I don't know what to do here. And I thought I'll just sort of do what everyone else does. And uh, Ryan made the call to come in. I thought, stuff it, and coming in with him. And um, I didn't think it was going to pay off. I thought maybe the guys were going to be able to hold the line. But uh, obviously, that restart, the guys on the old tyres just took off slow. And I thought, I'll just wrap the outside and hopefully it pays off and the tyres just stuck and managed to get around them. So, um, and, and Dwayne, he. I thought he was going to keep that inside line, and um, and he almost did. Uh, he, he did awesome and um, was a good battle with those guys in the end. Oh, fantastic, and uh, congratulations on being uh, the first, not only double, but triple winner so far this season in trucks uh, as you continue to charge up the table. A, a great drive. And uh, speaking of great drives, Ryan Jones, um, we uh, – Got uh, plenty of vision of you tonight, uh, putting the uh, the wind up, those in front of you, and uh, finally breaking out into the lead and uh, managing to create a really good gap there for yourself, jumping into pit lane in the same fashion as Trahert um, when that uh, final caution period came out. So a, a really strong run from you all night. Yeah, I should have won that race. <laughs> I, I would have won that race on that last race start too if the... Uh um obviously luke was on my inside um because obviously we both pitted but um the inside line went the outside line didn't so he got the good launch and i just had to wait because obviously in amscar you can't change lanes until the start finish line so i just had to sit there and cost about 10 15 <coughs> truck lengths by the time we even got to turn one so obviously luke got to the leaders before me and just two laps not enough time to get up there and pass him again so a little bit disappointed there um i don't know what would have happened if we'd stayed green without that caution? I, I feel like I would have been fine on fuel. My numbers told me I was good on fuel. And I think I would I would have been able to defend Priest for the lap or two he would have been on my bumper. Uh, and, and Luke as well. So I feel like either way, I, I, I could have had that one covered. So I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed there. Interesting you mentioned that because we did discuss fuel and we were looking at it um, with that uh, lap 58 uh, was the, the last time through pit lane and uh, just wondering whether or not you're going to be able to make it to the end. So um, obviously the number a little close for some, they uh, dropped in before you, but uh, wow, what a finish. Well, we certainly enjoyed it. So um, a, a great night uh, for you, uh, irrespective of the disappointment and um, plenty of close racing for us to be able to, to bring across the stream. So thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Dwayne Priest, big move from you, mate. Uh, 17 spots up from your starting position. Uh, the cleanest truck on the podium. Um, you can take that one back to the dealer and hand the keys over the counter. A, uh, a really strong run from you tonight. Yeah, thanks, mate. Firstly, thanks. Um, and well done, Luke and Jonesy. It was brilliant racing all night. It was a it was a tire game right from the start. I just, um, I don't know how to qualify these things. I'm just not... Um, I don't know. I just, uh, I think I try and bank the first lap and and then muck the second one up, trying to trying to, trying to make it faster for the first lap that I uh, didn't get it right. So I got to work on the qualifying thing. But um, the race has been brilliant. Everyone's been um, really clean. I mean, I accidentally took out uh, uh, Ben there. I just didn't give him enough room on the outside and sort of put him into the fence. I feel really bad for him. Um, um, but that no, was it. Was excellent fun and just yeah that strategy thing. I. I, I nearly pitted with the boys and then I thought, well, I might as well stay out because I pit with them. I'm, I'm only going to be finishing third, so I thought I'd roll the dice and stay out. But um, I probably should have shut the door a little bit more. But, uh, the, I mean, they were coming. I just wanted to keep it clean and, and um, finish, really. So thanks, boys. Had, had a ball tonight. Well, you certainly did that and you uh, you drove really, really well. We're following your, uh, your journey through the pack. Um, we could certainly see you coming and, um, yeah, drove a really, really great race tonight. So uh, so well done on your performance. Um, as usual, uh, Luke, start with you, mate. Just uh, sponsors, thank yous um, that you want to hand out. Um, yeah, first and foremost tonight uh, to you guys, FGME cast. Um, awesome to have you on board for the, the Cup Series going forward. Um, obviously, I've raced in a couple of different series that 
uh, you broadcast, including the AEE, which is running on the Wednesday nights for anyone who wants to check that out. Uh, the package is fantastic. The broadcast is excellent. Um, it's really good to have you guys here for the for the whole Anscar thing, the, the setup for the Mondays and the Thursdays as well. Um, so, yeah, definitely a big shout-out to you guys. Um, as for the sponsors, of course, Virtual Motorsport Mentor. Um, you know, Chris does a brilliant job, uh, like I've mentioned in the past, um, with getting us good to go. And he's the, pretty much the sole reason why I managed to get these good results so early in my um, high racing, quotation marks, career. And uh, I race designs for hooking the cars up. Um, again, I've said it a couple of times before, but the, the cars look fantastic. Uh, even when Skirley likes to throw the, uh, the yellow on the numbers and the, uh, and the rims, they still look good. <laughs> so shout out to Skirley there. Um, and just to the rest of the guys we race with, um, yeah, it's a pleasure to race with you guys. Uh, I'd appreciate the good battles every week. Uh, well said indeed. And uh, Ryan Jones, over to you, mate. Uh, some speed TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my only sponsor um my, my livery um normally the old trust default r racing paint scheme obviously having no no team or sponsor affiliation there but normally i'm running the uh black blue and white but i've chucked the old pink on the car on uh most of my schemes now because uh mum's gone and gotten diagnosed with breast cancer so now i'm all uh, aware of the whole breast cancer thing i'm probably missing the pink ribbon uh, on the car as well so that's the uh reason for pink flourish to my uh paint scheme now and you'll see the same on my cup car if i ever get my ass around to a thursday night race it's fantastic man yeah absolutely that's uh, a great thing to know so well, obviously wish your mum all the best uh in in that fight and uh yeah chuck the uh, pink on and come and join us on thursday night's streams ryan we'd uh, definitely like to see you there uh Thank you very much dwayne yeah mate well firstly uh ryan i'm sorry to hear that buddy and we'll um I'll, I'll have a chat to uh, Howie for uh, let's see if he can throw some pink on all of our cars too for you, mate. Um, um, so yeah, just just now <laughs> for doing all the boys' paints. We don't really have too many sponsors. Just um, I'm just running my own stuff. I've got two little boys, and um, they're both car racing mad. So uh, they've got this little motorsport thing they call Emerson Priest Motorsport. So <laughs> I'm just running that for them. But um, Howie and um, Kate Donnelly, he does all the paints for the other. Um, group of boys the um sim boys so you know without those sort of boys it sort of gets the get the league you know pumped up and and um you know a bit of team, team rivalry and that which is good good fun and um i'd like to thank you guys for for doing the cast fg me cast and um the whole team at anz car they put on a really good show i've been doing anz car for a lot of years now and um you know they, these they're great boys so fantastic when my dad died they did a tribute thing uh, for dad and, and it was just absolutely fantastic what they did for me and uh you know i'll be racing a and z car until i die i reckon love it cheers boys yeah it's a big uh thing Dwayne. actually that you know the uh, the anscar series um continues to go from strength to strength i mean and i'm i'm certainly not uh putting the pump on because we we're fortunate enough to broadcast the series that's that's just come about through actually chris purnell to be brutally honest and introducing me to ed and and all the team and 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 what we're lucky enough to get into but uh, it's a really great category 34 cars tonight um and uh, as in all motorsport incidents happen but uh, a great bunch of guys uh, all really i think hoping for everyone's success uh in the series so uh, well done to everyone running in this one and uh Good news for us is we get to bring forward our coverage of the Cup, which actually starts this Thursday. So we're uh, brimming to get uh, that up onto the stream. We've got a little bit of work to do to get that to happen, but uh, we're going to be there on Thursday night to broadcast our very first uh, Cup level series broadcast to you. And uh, I'm told it's to be exciting. You all know I don't make any secret of the fact that I'm a circuit man learning in an oval track world. And um, I get told that uh, we're headed to Bristol dirt, um, which I, I had to ask whether or not it was a made up thing because it sounds very eye racing. Um, let's do this together. But now I'm in fact informed that they, uh, they do run cup cars with a dirt tire, which just blows me away. I can't imagine the V8 supercars uh, doing something like that, and that is uh, up this week um, yeah, so on Thursday Bristol night. Will be coming up on the 25th of March, and as you said, on the dirt first time this year, uh, the the NASCAR series will be running on that dirt circuit as well. We saw Bristol trucks a couple of weeks ago for the truck series, 
uh, on the old uh, on the old asphalt and uh, concrete style, but now it is dirt. It's a very very different beast. So we look forward to that one coming up and uh, first broadcast for FGME Cast coming there. It's going to be a special one. Yeah, so I think I'm probably going to sit back in that one. We're trying to maintain the same broadcast team and just uh, learn a little bit there. I'll just be running the cameras and it uh, will be the guys who will be uh, voicing that one for you. So uh, your coverage team won't change there um, while I just get my head around it. So uh, to join us on Thursday night as we uh, get involved in Anne's Car Cup and uh, we're looking forward to that tomorrow night. Uh, we do head back to my native uh, playing grounds in circuit racing with the Oz Pro Am Sim Series uh, coming to you for round one. Uh, and uh, we're excited to get that one up onto the stream and uh, bring you round one of the official series. Of course, we did have their uh, um, wildcard round, sorry, excuse me, uh, last week. And uh, we saw 44 cars on the grid for that one at Phillip Island. It was huge. Um, and this week, I don't think we're going to differ too many in terms of the numbers. So do jump on the stream tomorrow night, quarter to eight. As usual, we will be back here to bring that one to uh, live on FGM Ecast, your E place for pace. Once again, thank you to everyone, AJ Insurance Services, our uh, broadcast partner, Ferguson Group Media and Virtual Motorsport Mentor, of course, again, getting another mention. Uh, we will see you tomorrow night on our stream. Of course, Carl, thank you, and uh, I'll be back with you on Thursday night.